Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about apnea walkings. And for those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Sergey, and here I'm sharing everything what I know about freediving. So if you're a beginner or intermediate freediver, subscribe to this channel because you're going to find a lot of useful information. So what is apnea walking? From this name you can understand that you walk while you're holding your breath, right? Pretty simple. You do a relaxation breathing, you do a nice big breath in, and then you walk. First time I met this kind of training when I was doing my uh, freediving levels. Then in a school where I've been training, uh, there was no swimming pool, so we was not training that much uh, dynamic training. Again, because there was no swimming pool and basically you need to train in the open water uh, like for dynamic, which is not really convenient. Uh, it's possible, but not really convenient. This is why we was doing a lot of apnea walks. So in our school, in crystal freediving, we don't do that much apnea walking because we have a couple of uh, long swimming pools. So we mainly training uh, there, right? So we're training in a swimming pool and we're training in the ocean. However, apnea walking can be used as a training tool. For example, there are a few reasons. For example, if you don't have a swimming pool, if you don't have a, a freediving body, or let's say if you have some kind of ear infection and you don't want to go in this particular moment in the water so you want to stay from the water for maybe a few days or maybe for any other reasons right so when you don't have a chance to train in the pool then apnea walking is pretty solid uh, way how you can uh, train free diving so again how it looks like you do a nice big breath in and then you walk when I was training uh, back to the time when I was doing um, free diving courses, we was putting the line on the sand and then uh, it like your apnea walking is measured by the distance, right? So for example, you hold your breath and let's say you walk, I don't know, 20 meters or 30 meters or 50, etc, etc. What I didn't like about this method that some free divers, like some of my free diving bodies, let's say when they see the end of the line they try to speed up a little bit to reach this uh, faster to reach the end of the line faster to finish exercise faster obviously it's not a good idea because in free diving we don't want to be as fast as possible we want to be as much relaxed as possible this is why when i start to do the same from time to time in my free diving school i decide okay it's better to measure the time not the distance because in this case doesn't matter you're walking fast or slow, it's still gonna be, let's say 20, 40, 60 seconds, right? So in this case, again, it's motivate the student to be more relaxed and not to uh, go too fast, okay? So, like I said, in our school, when we're doing this, I or other instructor uh, do a stopwatch. Let's say we are walking with the students, and giving them the time uh, when they need to start, when they need to stop. Uh, we do this training in a few different ways. So for example, it's going to be more concentration on a CO2. So you can call it like CO2 table. It is the same idea how we train CO2 tables. Uh, I know that a lot of people don't like CO2 tables like training, but anyway, uh, it is when you do not really long breath hold, but your recovery time is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And you can same, you can do the same in, in apnea walking. You can let's say do maybe apnea walking always. I don't know. Let's say 30 seconds, but then your recovery maybe start from two minutes, then 130, one minute, 45 seconds, 30 seconds, 15 seconds, maybe five seconds, right? The next one, which I like to do again, if sometimes I don't have a freediving uh, body or I don't want to go for whatever reason uh, to the swimming pool, then I more prefer to do like O2 table. Uh, again, the term O2 table can be misleading. The any table, CO2 table or O2 table, they doesn't have to have, let's say, uh, fixed recovery time or fixed breath hold time. So for example, in my case, when I do O2 table, uh, let's say I hold my breath and walk, maybe first time for 30 seconds, then I do relaxation uh, as long as I want. Then let's say I do one minute uh, walking, then again I do as relaxation as long as possible, and then maybe I'm gonna do a few more one minutes, or maybe I'm gonna do one minute 30 seconds, etc., etc. So you get the idea. 
again, if you are looking at the classical CO2 O2 table, uh, you can find, by the way, the, uh, the links to the video where I was explaining how the classical tables looks like, uh, then you have a fixed amount of recovery, let's say in case of the O2 table, or fixed breath hold in case of the CO2 table. But in reality, you can mix, you can mix no problem. And then let's say there is can be like a more uh, the training towards your like lactic tolerance. Um, again, we done it today. Today we done two table. Today we done first O2 table with our students, with my students, and then we done lactic table. So in the lactic table, how let's say one of the way how you can do it. So for example, you do full exhale and then you walk let's say 10 maybe 15 seconds. Then without uh, stopping, so not stop, uh, not stop walking, you keep going, but now with the breathing, maybe another 10 or 15 seconds. And then uh, doing the same over and over. Or you can have a rest. Let's say, for example, today we was doing the rest, like short rest. So it was 10 seconds walking fast, uh, then short rest, then walking fast, then short rest. So in this case, uh, the level of oxygen during the short rest partially recovered, but you kind of build up oxygen debt in your muscle tissues, and then this is why after a while you start feeling that your legs getting like pumped, right? Uh, so this can be a training as well, right? In the next few minutes, you're gonna see the example of this kind of training. Uh, again, we, we're going to start with O2 table, it's going to be a first half of the training and then the rest we're going to do this kind of lactic training. Again, it doesn't have to be called lactic, I just don't know another name for this training, but this is a, it's more like a sprints, right? You do a short sprints, like interval sprints maybe going to be called, uh, like it's maybe going to be a better name, right? So you do a short, like short sprint, short recovery, short sprint, short recovery, so more like interval training. So probably lactic training is a little bit misleading term. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove it. Okay, so lactic training, forget about this uh, term, let's call it interval training, okay? So this type of training you can do on your own, but uh, even if it is possible to do this kind of training without the body, because let's say in the worst case scenario, if you have a blackout, you're gonna fall uh, not into the water, but you fall on the ground, there is a few, things which you need to keep in mind. So first of all, when you're gonna have a blackout, you're gonna be unconscious, right? So I don't know what is your like a current physical condition. So maybe consult your doctor, uh, like is it like everything is good with your health. Second, don't forget, when you're falling, if there is any like a solid objects, you can make some kind of damage to yourself, right? So think about where you're going to walk, uh, where you're going to do this type of training. You probably don't want to walk near a sharp, like a metal uh, or stones, metal objects or stones or something like this. You also maybe don't walk if you do it like alone. Maybe you don't walk, maybe you don't want to walk near the water, right? Because even if let's say you're just walking on the beach, if you're going to have a blackout and you're going to fall in the water and let's say in the worst case scenario you're going to fall face down, then again you have a big problem. This is a few safety precautions. Uh, make sure that uh, your health is good. Make sure that uh, you're not going to fall on something uh, like a metal or stones. Also make sure you're not walking near the, uh, any water because if you're going to fall face down in the water then it's going to be a really uh, bad situation. But otherwise, like a lot of people doing this alone, and as far as I'm concerned, it's more or less safe. However, it's still better to train with a free diving body. It's more fun. You can do actually uh, time checking for each other. You don't have to do it uh, simultaneously. And then it's gonna be again, if your body is checking the time, then you can relax more, and then you do the same uh, for your body. So I think it's more, just more fun. So guys, this was my explanation about apnea walking and then in the next few minutes you're going to see the video uh, how we was training uh, this morning for apnea walking.
training. Hopefully now it makes sense how the apnea walking looks like. Uh, again, it's better still practice with your body. However, many people practicing alone, uh, still make sure that safety is your priority. Hopefully this video was useful for you. If it was useful, don't forget to click the like button. And if you forget to subscribe to my channel, do it now. Okay, so thank you very much for watching my video and see you next time.